Audio is going, video is going, clap. I didn't clean my room. Welcome to my bachelor pad! Before we kick this video off, I wanted to give you one last chance. If you haven't filled out the Siege Esports fan theory form that I released a video on a few weeks ago, I want to do a follow up to that one and show you the results, and I haven't been able to recently because things have been getting in the way. So, one more chance, link to the video form is in the description, and we'll get back to it soon. For now, back to your regularly scheduled content, brought to you by Raid Shadow Land. The transfer window for Rainbow Six Siege has closed as of last night, a two-week period after the Invitational where teams can lock down deals and settle on new rosters. Now, that deadline is just for when roster transfers are locked. Orgs can technically wait until the second half of the Pro League season this month to actually announce anything, but what we got yesterday is still pretty damn interesting. Team Reciprocity has finalized their lineup after benching two players early last week, E United is under new leadership, Luminosity have a new support player, and there was a lot of Reddit and Twitter drama that went down as well, but I'll touch on that at the end. Still not covering drama, but I feel like this needs talking about. First, Reciprocity. Nyx and Retro have both been formally released from the team, and those holes have been filled with Slash Hug and the return of Biologic. Slash spent the first half of this Pro League season with Luminosity, including going to the OGA Pit Miner in December, where LG placed fourth overall. Him coming to Reciprocity reunites him with his old rogue teammate Vertical, with whom he spent about a year on that squad. He brings over three years of experience to the table with him, including championships at USN 2018 and DreamHack Valencia 2019. He's probably one of the best players in North America. I could sing this man's praises for a very long time, but the point is, this is a very good pickup for Reciprocity. The other pickup also raises some intrigue. Biologic has not played at the Pro League level since August 2018, where he used to be the IGL for TSM. Remember those days? He and the boys had a shaky Pro League start, but then made the Raleigh Major quarterfinals after a pretty good run. And then right afterwards, he leaves the team and TSM cuts him from any additional promotional material. When he left, he cited personal reasons, but then allegations started getting thrown around left and right, there were some pro players getting involved, and without any tangible evidence, the competitive community seemed like it was ganging up against him pretty concerning mob mentality. I don't know the real reasons for Bio's departure from the team, and I don't need to know. I'm unaware if he was just going through a rough patch in life, or if the public response to his hiatus was justified. But what I can say is he got right back on the boat. He came back after a few months, gathered a team of ex-professional players, and just a week or so ago, he qualified for Challenger League. If that's not enough proof that he's still worthy of playing at a top level, then hopefully the reciprocity pickup can help further validate that he's back. He'll be playing hard support and IG yelling for the team once Pro League resumes, and hopefully this is a squad that Rec can be comfortable sitting with for a good long time. Next! Topic. Jarvis is filling the hole left by Slash on Luminosity. Like Biologic, he's also recently qualified for the upcoming Challenger League season. He's also an ex-pro. He's also a support player. He also used to play for TSM. I'm literally just repeating myself. You guys like this content? Great. Help me write my damn scripts. I'm kidding. They just have pretty similar paths. Jarvis has also played for the SK Gaming Dark Zero roster, but hasn't had a long tenure on a pro squad since May when he left DZ. I love the fact that Jarvis is back on a pro league team, but I don't see where he fits on Luminosity just yet. He and Slash both play Siege pretty differently, so it's not like LG are trying to replace Slash unless Jarvis is switching roles or unless someone else is switching roles. Someone needs to make a change within that team because right now, they have a sixth place hole in Pro League to dig themselves out of. I don't know what this team's really gonna look like with him on it, but we'll find out in just a couple weeks. Next topic. E United has made a coaching change, releasing Execration and signing Bagel after a brief stint with TSM that ended after the invitation. Why are all these guys from TSM? Shit. He's found new footing with the red, white, and blue after about two weeks of not being on a team. I covered what he's done in TSM in a previous video, click on that right here to learn more, and now is the time for him to prove that he was a big part in helping that team turn their fortunes around. Now is the time for him to prove himself. I'm really happy for the guy, and I know I don't really cover much about coaches moving teams, but considering TSM's status as one of the world's best teams right now, this update seemed appropriate. Best of luck to Execration and where he 
he goes in the future as well. All right, I'll leave you with this one last thing. There's a very specific reason why I don't cover leaks, speculation, drama, or things that haven't been officially confirmed on this show. I fundamentally believe that leaks aren't worth it. In both traditional sports and esports, it's a common thing to see news like this leaked online in some capacity, but sometimes it can be totally misleading or lacking all of the information that might come out when the news is announced officially. I pride myself in getting as many details right as I can when covering news, and even though I'm not perfect, I've never had to issue a big correction. I'm also not interested in the clout that comes with being the first person to leak these details. With me, it's not about being first, it's about being right. And since I can't upload videos super fast anyway, I'm comfortable waiting for official public word before I say anything. It's why I haven't talked about the current Challenger League drama, or whether players leaving specific teams is true, or other things that the Siege community at large does not know yet. Being more connected now means I know some of what's going on behind the scenes, but not everything. I want to be a trustworthy person to know, and I don't think talking about drama or leaks is a good look to help me get there. So I hope that makes sense. All I can say is that there's still more of this kind of news to come, so please hit up my Twitter, my Twitch, and this YouTube channel for more in the coming days. Please and thank you, and I hope you'll join me as I quit Siege and become a pro player in Valorant. Talk to you later. Bye!